Hi everybody and welcome to our home here in Brittany in northwest France. If you're here for the first time, nice to meet you. If you're here and you're returning, good to have you back again. My name's Jane, my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free, living here in France. And every Sunday we open our homes and our lives and we share our frugal and thrifty living with you. So let's take a look at what we're going to share with you this week. Now, if you're a regular viewer, you know I like to be reflective. And I want to start by sharing this with you. What is a budget to one person? is living like royalty to another person. What is a budget to one person is like living in desperate and dire circumstances to another. So people will say, I don't have anywhere near that much money, or, ooh, I couldn't live off like that. I couldn't live like you. We understand that. Everybody's budget is unique. Everybody's circumstances are unique. This is ours. So this week we're going to be sharing with you our actual income and our actual budget, how we budget, how we, what we save, how much we save, how much we put into sinking funds how much we've had to change those sinking funds and how much we've had to change our budgets. Uh, this is real money. This isn't, uh, a, this isn't subjective. This isn't just figures out of the air. This is the real budget that we live on. We do not do a budget with me showing our budget every single month, but we do do it every few months. We have people who say to us, it's helpful to them to see how somebody structures a budget and writes a budget. So without further ado, let's take a look at our budget for April. started by looking at our income and expenses for April and I'm going to start of course with where we are income wise. We are 2,355 euros and that comes from my pension, Mike's pension and our income. And to put this into perspective as where we are on the scale of incomes in France, if we were both on the minimum wage, after tax, we'd have 2,598. So you can see here we are slightly below minimum wage. So we have that amount, then we need to start taking money off, don't we? We're going to start off with long-term savings, which is 10%. And that's 235 that's banked and you may or may not know we've just bought a new to us car we now need to save up for the next new to us car and we aim to do that at the earliest in three years time because we have a three year warranty with our car so if we aim to save 5,000 over three years that's 140 months and those 375 go into and on top of our long-term savings and currently our long-term savings is being added to our emergency fund because we're going to have to make that bigger we can't leave it where it was last year we need to make that bigger so we like to have a fully funded 12 months emergency fund and the fund that we've got in there isn't enough. So our aim this year is to get use our 10% that we save each month to get our emergency fund completely fully funded. As you can see 
see there we've got 375 euros out of the 200 sorry 2355 euros going straight into long-term savings that savings we are not going to touch for a very long time then we're going to go into our sinking funds and the first item on our sinking funds are taxes and water and these are the costs for the whole year I add them up divide them by 12 and come to the 150 a month our income tax bill for the year I'm going to straighten that up a bit for you there there we go is approximately 600 we don't really know we're just working off last year's figure and we've added a bit more on as well our water bill last year was 350 we don't know if it's gone up or, or not our property tax is 262 euros for the year our refuse tax that's our trash our rubbish and our recycling is 178 and our TV license for the sake of here I called it TV tax is 138 so that comes to 1528 and I've allowed for price increases so I've made that 1800 a year I've divided it by 12 and that's 150 a month that I put into that sinking fund for taxes and water. The next item that we save for each and every month are clothes and shoes. And we allow ourselves 300 each, that's obviously 600, and that's 50 a month. We then have our next one, which is trips and holidays of a thousand. And that might look a lot, but I'm just going to relate to you how expensive things are. Last October, we took the ferry and the car and ourselves, obviously, over from Roscoff to Plymouth. We then stayed two nights in an Airbnb. We spent a bit of money when we were over there. And that two nights in the UK and the ferry and all the money that we had to spend as well on uh, different paperwork and stuff due to COVID came to a thousand euros. So people asked us, why didn't you spend very long in the UK? Because uh, that's how much it cost us. So that means we save 84 euros a month and people might think, well, trips and holidays, that's not essential. It's jolly well essential to me to go back and see my family. Then D, we have 12 gifts to buy, birthdays, Mother's Day, Christmas and so on for different people. And that amounts to 50 each, 600 in total, 50 a month. The next sinking fund is pets and vets. Uh, our dogs get groomed uh, three every three months. So that's 360 and we've allowed 240 for vets and medication. And that's 50 a month. The next one we've reduced slightly because we have a newer car now and we don't anticipate such big repair bills. Um, because we've got a warranty with this car. So we've put aside 50 a month, which is the 600 a year to pay for any tires, windscreen wipers and car service. item on my sinking funds is we always need to have money put aside this isn't an emergency so this isn't something from an emergency fund this is something this is Murphy knocking on the door isn't it Murphy's law something could go wrong so we need to put money aside for this and if the dishwasher or oven or washing machine or fridge freezer was just completely broken beyond economic repair any one of those items would cost about 600 euros to replace. So we like to keep that fund topped up and we put aside 50 euros a month. Now the last, the next one here, sorry, not the last one, the next one, H, which is DIY and home maintenance. 
We've set ourselves a budget this year of €3,000 and that's 250 a month. Uh, we've already got skirting boards, Americans you call those baseboards. We've got some bathroom flooring to buy. We have a few to buy some wood to make window sills. Um, that's the bit, uh, the recess that the window is in and the wooden material to go in there. But the main part of that 3,000 are materials to finish our barn. Uh, the windows are all broken, we need to repair the windows, we need to buy gutters, we need to buy blocks to build a wall, we need to buy some wood. 3,000 actually won't cover that, but it will go a good way towards it. And the final line in our sinking fund is to, we want to spend money on plants for this year. And we set aside a one euro challenge for this, a euro a day uh, to save 360 euros a year. And we aim to spend, we've averaged that out of 30 euros a month. So those are all our sinking funds. and the totals at a halfway point. So we have a joint income of two pensions and our earning after tax of two, well, after social charges, we still have to pay tax every August on this, um, of 2,355. We've got 1,139 going into savings, into our long-term savings and the car savings, and our sinking funds. Now sinking funds are not for fun. They're bills, they're costs, they think they're gonna happen. It's not that there's some of them that might happen, like needing new car tires, but not one of those can be ignored. They all need that money setting aside every single month, just like it's a bill. So every month out of that, you can see we are saving 1,216 every single month. Make the next part of my budget for April are my fixed costs. And you can see at the top there, our fixed costs are 974 and this might be where people go wrong I think they might think well I've got all of this money and my bills and everything are 974 but maybe they didn't save the sinking funds maybe they weren't putting the long-term savings away maybe they weren't saving for the next car I don't know but those of us who have a zero balance budget this is what we do we know everything that's going out so I have now changed our budget for the supermarket from 368 to 400. We weren't doing it. We just were not doing it. We, we could eat uh, really cheap food, but there are things that we can't eat. So for example, I can't eat gluten and we're trying to eat healthily. So, and costs have gone up. So they've gone up from 368, which was already an increase on last year's 350 up to 400 a month and what does that pay for that pays for all of our food all of our drink coffee milk everything all of our toiletries all of our cleaning products all of our laundry products and all of our pet food so 400 a month the next increased amount here is fuel we were setting aside 70 a month for fuel, but with the fuel that we use in the summer months for the garden machinery, for cutting the grass, for doing the strimming and the hedgings, it would have been 100, but with the increases in fuel prices, that's had to go up to 120. So that's increased. We have our health insurance is there, which is 73. Uh, we have a new deal any moment now, but some of those will come, they will come down. 
Some of them will go up, some of them will go down, but that's, that's the figure we have to pay for April. The car insurance for the new car is 50 a month. My mobile phone, and which is a really good phone package, is 13 a month. Mike's mobile phone is 10 a month. And the bank charges for our bank accounts and that's 11 a month. That's not too bad. We've got uh, one, two, five bank accounts with that. So that's not too bad at all. And this here is an is ERSAF. That's a social charge. That's kind of like a national insurance in the UK. So that's one part of our fixed costs. more fixed costs here. We have our 4G package which I used previously for my work which was online teaching. We've kept this package because uh, it was the only speed fast enough to upload our YouTube videos. So we use that for our YouTube work. The next one is SOSH and that's our all of our TV channels our home phone and our internet as well so that's 30. So realistically really we are paying 50 a month for our telephone, our TV and our internet. Now the next one is EDF, Electricity de France and Electricity de France is a bit of an enigma really because Instead of setting a steady amount all year and it going up or going down to pay for the seasonal variations, they put it up and down. So it's going to go up again because it was down, if that makes sense. So we don't know what it is at the moment, but we are, we are budgeting for that of 130 a month. We still have the car that we're about to sell. We still have to insure it whilst we own it. We may have two more payments to pay for April and May, and then this will go. We've still got Mike's previous healthcare insurance of 25. We've given notice, they've cancelled it, they still take the money, and then they give it back. So those are where our fixed costs come from. Sorry, nudge my camera there. And you can see that those add up to our bills to 974 a month. So now I've gone through all the details of our budget, you can see how I arrive at zero at the end of the month because every single aspect of our spending and our budget has been given a job to do. We've got the income, we've taken away the 10% for long-term savings, the car savings, the sinking funds and the living costs. We're left with 242, which we call discretionary spending. But this month, because it's a no spend month, this will be added to the long-term savings. It just creates a little bit of buffer and it gets us, gets us to our 12 months sink, sorry, emergency fund sooner rather than later. Now, we really hope that that was useful for you, how we structure our budget on there. You will see that there's no line on our budget for housing, there's no line on our budget for any debts, because we are completely debt and mortgage free. We've reached that stage of our lives. If you have any questions to ask about our budget, 
go ahead and leave a comment in the below. So just leave a comment. We always try and answer all of your questions. If you've enjoyed this video this week, if you found it any use to you, go on, we ask you this, just give it a like. It really helps the algorithm. And if you, the more people who like the video, the more YouTube put our videos out there. Just leaves me to say thank you to everyone who is a new subscriber. And if you're not a subscriber yet, come along and join the family. If you're a subscriber, you won't miss our videos. Just leaves me to say, on behalf of Mike and I, thank you everybody. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.